Welcome. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So, when I'm looking at a transformation, or when I'm looking at graphing a logarithmic equation or a logarithmic function, I always want to be able to determine exactly what my transformations are. So, in this case, I have y equals 4 log base 2 of x minus 3. So, um, we understand that we have an x minus 3. So, by applying the transformations of a function, we know that the graph is going to shift three units to the right. All right, so that's going to be very helpful in understanding you know, how our graph is going to be shifting along. And this 4 and 2, that's going to just affect how the graph is going to be increasing or decreasing. So to graph this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to graph the parent function with no transformation. And then I'm going to want to graph the function with transformations. So to graph the parent function without transformations, I'm going to have y equals 4 log base 2 of x. All right. Now, to graph this, again, we can set up a table of values. So what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll divide. So I'll have y equals 4, 4 log base 2 of x. Now, there's a couple properties of exponents we could use. Or you could also divide by 4 on both sides and then rewrite it in exponential form. So I have y over 4 equals log base 2 of x. Rewriting this in exponential form, we have 2 raised to the y fourth power equals x. So when I want to create a table of values, and remember, when I'm doing table of values for uh, logarithmic equations, I just want to kind of pick two values. I don't need to get crazy. Um, and usually my two favorite values are when x equals 1 and when y is going to equal, or when x equals the base of your exponent. So when x equals 1, we know that y has to be 0. And for x equal to be 2, we know that y has to equal 4. So now I can plot those two points. So I have 1 comma 0. And then I have 2 comma 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so you can see my exponential graph is going to look something like that, where my domain is still going to be from 0 to infinity. My range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. And my asymptote, where my graph is going to approach, is still going to be at x equals 0. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shift that graph to the right. So I plotted my two points, 2 comma 4. Now what I need to do is shift those points two units to the right. So to do that, if I had 1 comma 0, now shifting three units, I'm sorry, to the right, is now going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 comma 0. And to take the graph, or to take the point 2 comma 4 and shift it three units to the right, I'm now going to have 5 comma 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 4 comma 0 and now 5 comma 4. Then I go ahead and graph these. And the other thing is, remember, my asymptote was originally at x equals 0. But now if I shift that over 3 units, I'm now going to have a new asymptote at x equals 3. All right? And that makes a big difference as far as my domain, because now when my asymptote was at 0, we know that all the values had to be at least positive. Well, now all my values for my domain, my input values, have to be greater than 3. So as my asymptote now changes to x equals 3, my domain now changes from, instead of 0, it's from 3 to infinity. My range, though, however, is unchanged. So it would be negative infinity to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph with a horizontal transformation. Thanks.